a live stream. It's called uh, uh, My Journey to the Trinity. And it's about things I learned from the Bible, about the deity of Jesus Christ, about Jesus being God, uh, about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All of these are issues that Satan fights a lot. This is the biggest thing he fights. Uh, and so uh, I like to talk about it and uh, from different angles. And uh, and today, uh, once again, we have with us our, uh, our brother, our dear brother, uh, Adam Seeker. Uh, welcome, brother Adam. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for inviting. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Praise Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Adam, yesterday, and uh, for everybody, uh, uh, yesterday, is, uh, I had Father Zechariah on. And for people who don't know who Father Zechariah is, um, I just want to say, give you a little bit. He has been studying Islam for 60 years. Uh, he is a, uh, a Coptic priest from Egypt. And about... And when uh, he was young, his father used to, uh, in Egypt, used to love the Muslims and they would share the gospel with them and stuff. So he grew up um, interacting with the Muslims in a very evangelistic, loving way. And uh, his brother was killed by the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, they cut his tongue out because of his preaching the gospel to Muslims and stuff. Horrible, horrible thing, the Muslim Brotherhood who President Obama supported and had in his White House. and uh, But anyway, that's another story. But uh, um, anyway, Father Zechariah has been doing these lessons on Islam for the last 20 years almost. He was, uh, first, he was kicked out of Egypt. He was arrested twice, kicked out of Egypt. And so he's, uh, <laughs> he's never stopped preaching the gospel to the Muslims, and he knows the Arabic perfectly. I talked to Ravi Zachariah. Now, he, a lot of people mistake him for Ravi Zachariah, but he's not Ravi Zachariah, but Ravi Zachariah is also very well known. And I, I spoke to Ravi Zachariah about Father Zachariah. <laughs> Ravi Zachariah told me that Father Zachariah is the best person that he knows in terms of dealing with the Hadith because he knows the Arabic so well. And he has collections of books that nobody else in the world has. He has... He has led to a revolution, a revolution in uh, knowledge of Islam, uh, the truth about Islam. He has caused a revolution in the Muslim world. He's one of the leading figures. He's like, he's the equivalent, for instance, in the, in the Christian world, uh, very well known as Billy Graham or Roberts. He is like both of them combined in terms of his impact on the Muslim world. He has caused an earthquake in the Muslim world. There's a $60 million price on his head from Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda put a $60 million price on his head to try to kill him because he was so effective in exposing Islam and bringing Muslims to the Lord Jesus. So anyway, that's who Father Zechariah is, if you don't know. <laughs> so it was a great honor to have him on. And and uh, I'm so blessed. You know, I had a TV show on his station, which is called El Fadi TV, for many years. And I was on his program many years. Because of financial difficulties, The my program was discontinued, uh, as well as uh, some other live programs. They stopped doing the live programs, um, except for Father Zechariah's programs, which are still continuing on El Fadi TV. And you can watch them there. They're in Arabic. My program was in English, and so um, anyway, because of the relationship the Lord has blessed me with with him, I love to bring him here, and he has been so willing and so kind to come on and to, uh, you know, a lot of what I do is for my relatives, but it's not just for my relatives, obviously, it's for the whole world. But, you know, Jesus said, go to Jerusalem, Samaria, uh, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the four corners of the earth. And so, you know, he had a, he started with Jerusalem and, and I guess my Jerusalem in a sense, I, I have several Jerusalems, but one of them that's very dear to my heart is my village in the, in the Middle East and my, where my relatives live. And, 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 the, and you know, they're so 
I know I love them. I care about them. They're Muslims. I want them to know about Jesus. And I'm so thankful that God has brought this wonderful teacher to be able to teach, to speak to them. And so uh, anyway, uh, I guess uh, I have several questions I want to ask uh, and points I want to bring out about what Father Zachariah said yesterday, Adam. Um, and so I'd like to ask you questions and, and, and get your opinion on, on, on different things that Father Zachariah said. If I could just ask you uh, in general, I know that it was in Arabic, but I tried to do some translating, even though my translating wasn't that good yesterday. But uh, if, if I could just ask you, first of all, if, if you just have an overview of what you thought about what Father Zechariah said yesterday. Hi, yes. Uh, it was very destructive, quite frankly. There were certain things that he showed. Uh, there are certain things like uh, what the tafsirs and early scholars are stating about the death of Jesus. And uh, like there are certain new evidences that I even didn't know. So, you know, like last week on Friday, I did Isa of Islam versus Jesus right. uh, of Bible. And in those, we showed certain verses and we showed that Jesus himself, when he was a baby uh, in the cradle, according to Quran, it says, uh, blessed is the day I am born and the day I die and the day I will raise again. So Quran has hints here and there where Muslim commentators, rather, let me just say later commentators actually come in and, and destroy and state uh, the other verse, proclaim the other verse where it is, says Shubha, that it was a Shubha that he died, but fortunately or unfortunately, whatever you may like to say, um, uh, Quran actually gives you a lot of hints that he actually died. And without dying, he couldn't be raised because like even in Quran chapter 5117, Allah raised him to himself. Right. Allah exalted, raised him to himself. So how can Allah raise him to himself? Whereas going to Allah means he's that. So yeah. and Father Zachariah actually showed different tafsirs where a lot of people, a lot of Muslim scholars are actually proclaiming that he died for three days and then he was raised to Allah. Some are actually claiming that it is uh, very illogical to say he never died. Uh, so yeah, whoever wants to watch all of his references, it is there uh, in, in the previous broadcast with Father Zechariah. And it is wonderful broadcast. I would love to see what the rebuttals uh, should be. But unfortunately, we do not have any kind of rebuttal at that time. I, I was amazed. Yeah. Well, you know, there were lots of Arab, uh, lots of my cousins uh, responded and there, there's many, uh, you know what, you know what, I was really disappointed to be honest. Uh, there's one guy that I've, do I've done debates with on, in Arabic, he's from my village and he's training to be an imam and he did a, I was really disappointed. I mean, it, it's such an important subject. And uh, and he started saying, "Well, what does Ezekiel 18 mean, or something?" <laughs> I'm thinking, dude, this is the most important subject for both uh, for Muslims and for Christians. And you're talking about Ezekiel 15, you know, because they didn't want to say, how, you know, some sexual innuendo or something. Just to, I'm thinking, dude, you know, get a life. You know, I couldn't believe he. I was really disappointed that he did that. That's that's, that's a big problem that they want to run Very, left and right and change the subject when they actually do not have any information on the subject. And isn't that yeah. a standard response that you have seen every time? Yeah. You are talking about A, and they'll bring C every, and F. Yeah. yeah, and but you know what? It's like a. I was, I was like, my head was spinning. I mean, I've worked with Father Zechariah for for over ten years. I, I, I translated his programs from Arabic. I've done, I've translated uh, parts of his book. I've done, I've been very. It's not like I, I, I don't know about what he teaches. I know what he teaches with, in great detail. I know what he teaches, and I, you know, I've done, and I, and much of what I, what I share. On, on this 
live stream is from what I learned from him. He's the one. He's my primary teacher in, uh, about Islamics, you know, uh, in Arabic Islamiyat. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I know what he teaches. But I was still blown away. It was so amazing. And um, and I and I just want to say today the name of the the name of of the broadcast today is the Quran never says Isa didn't die. For those of you who don't know who Isa, he is Jesus in the Quran. Okay, the Quran never says that Isa didn't die. You know, that's what I want to say today. I want, if, if the Muslims forget, uh, get one sentence from today. The Quran never says that Isa didn't die. In fact, it says, it says very, very clearly several times that he did die. And so, uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, you know, uh, Adam, this is something that, that I've, uh, that I've, done and, and and i'm gonna develop this more and uh i just wanted to uh uh to explain why for me and i know i know this is so important it's so important you know for everybody but you know the way i see it is that sometimes uh if we take a person on a journey theologically Mm -hmm. and, they, and they are starting from the point, uh, uh, you know, the point that I want to get people to, the point I want to get people to is what the Bible says. And that is that uh, the point I want to get people to is that Jesus died and rose again and that he died for our sins and rose again after three days and then ascended to the to the father that's the gospel you know in, in from first corinthians 15 is that jesus christ came died and rose again that's the gospel i want to get them to that point now quite often like with the muslims what the devil has done is he's put up these obstacles and one of the obstacles is that they say he did not die and so by by him not dying that means he didn't rise that means he didn't die for our sins and that means that you know yeah they'll take him to heaven but they eliminate the the death and resurrection which is our salvation meaning that there's no cure for our sickness which is sin and so you know i think that sometimes you may not be able to get a muslim all the way to the resurrection but if you get him one step closer to the resurrection and the one step closer is to get him to believe uh, or to just to see that Jesus died. If you get him to that point where he died, then you're one step closer to getting him to the resurrection. And then that's one step closer to explaining to him that the reason he died was for your sins. You see, so you can't get, maybe you may not get him to Z from A to Z, but you can get him from A to, to D or A to H, or A to I, you know? And, and if, they, if they acknowledge that Jesus died, take away that one layer of deception, you know, that, that when they say that he didn't die, if you if you get from one, that to the next step, which is that he did, he did die, that's progress. You know, that's one step towards the truth. And so- Exactly, and let me add to that point. Okay. You use the word deception, and that's stated in 355, uh, 354 and 355, that when Jews deceived, and then Allah deceived, um, he used the word makar and makarin. So Allah is the best of uh, makarin. Uh, so yes, so yes, this is a deception, number one. As you know, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Friday, my live stream was not to just show uh, that Jesus died, but also to show why he died. So I you, you know, you actually came in the end as well, where I showed the references from the Old Testament to the New Testament, showing the reason for him to die and how the blood of the lamb and why he is called the lamb of the God. And that is why his blood was shed. So I went through all of that just to show. And that is why I posted the uh, link of that particular uh, disc live discussion over yeah. here right underneath 
so yeah. that everyone uh, who's joining can actually look into that as well so the whole idea is as you described when you actually say that he never died then you actually never know why he died yeah. right and when you do not yeah. know why he died there is yeah. a big problem because since the old testament and the new testament describes everything in details whereas when quran comes up and he totally denies uh and let, let me say quran doesn't actually denies but the scholars denies it and and when the scholars denies it sorry could i, could I just i just want to come in on here uh, i i just want to uh, let me just uh, say one thing right now and this is a big humongous tremendous tremendous issue and i want to i almost want to write it down i almost want to write it down because this is such a big deal and that is that there are things that muslims believe that are not in the quran there are and those are the more those are the dangerous things the things that are not in the quran they believe and they don't believe things that are in the quran for instance uh, i just want to just say really quickly i know david wood did a huge deal <laughs> david wood said he said to the muslim he said i will I will say the shahada meaning that I'll become a muslim if you provide me one clear verse in the Quran that says that the bible is corrupted that the injil the gospel is corrupted nobody was able to do it they came up with all these weak flimsy arguments but they could not there is no verse in the in the Quran that says that the gospel is corrupted or has been changed the the exact opposite is true the Quran attests that the gospel is not changed. It's unchangeable. You cannot change the words of Allah. You know, that's what the Quran says. And it, uh, so. And, and just to add to this point, if, if gospel is changed, then Allah is the most puny God. He yes. couldn't save his own words. Because yeah. for Allah in Quran, Jesus brought the word of Allah. And right. he was just a baby when he had all the scriptures per Quran, not per you, not per me, per right. Quran. And uh, that's you know, where point, you know, you know, the point that I was trying to make, Adam. Though, it, you know, that point isn't really, you know, our focus isn't the corruption of the of the Quran, but the point is, is that Muslims believe things that are inconsistent with the Quran, and this is one of them. The Quran doesn't say that Jesus didn't die, but they've been told that it's been. And, and they will die on this on this hill on this hill that Jesus uh, di uh, didn't die. They'll die on this, but the Quran doesn't say it. And so, if they go back to the Quran and see what the Quran actually says, they will see that the Quran does not say that Jesus didn't die. It never says he didn't die. And uh, so, uh, you know, exactly. so they're dead. The most dangerous beliefs that Muslim have are not really in the Quran. If they read the Quran, they would and believe the Quran. That's why many times the Muslims say to me, they says, why are you talking about the Quran? You don't believe in the Quran. And, and, and my response to them is, you don't believe the Quran. <laughs> because if you believe the, Quran, exactly. you believe the gospel, if you believe the Quran, you believe that Jesus died and rose again. You know. So, um, but Adam, I have, a, I have a question from one of my cousins. Uh, in Arabic, I just wanted to ask you, you've already addressed it already today, but just because he asked it. Now, he asked it in Arabic, but um, I, I, I do believe his name is Nasr Muhammad. And you know what? Uh, I really respect him because he, you know what? He's been bringing some uh, uh, good references and stuff like that, and he's opened some doors to some pretty good discussions. Uh, you know, he doesn't just come on and cuss at me <laughs> like some of them do. He actually brings some really good arguments sometimes. So, uh, you know, one thing that Nasser is asking right now, and you've already touched on it, and I was going to ask you about it, but since he brought it up, maybe just because I don't know how long he's going to stay with us, but could you go ahead and tell us, tell us the significance, because you, you said you already talked about it, the importance of the verse in Surat Miriam, which is chapter 19, verse 33, where Isa as a baby says, peace be upon me the day I am born, the day I die, the day I come back to life. Can you, because he, he asked, what does that mean? 
Can you can you go just talk about that a little bit? Yes, we discussed it yesterday as well. Uh, oh, sorry, Friday as well. So if you go to the context and read a few verses before, you will realize that Jesus was just a baby when he is talking. And he is talking and he is saying, be kind to my mother. Uh, he is not, he is not, uh, she didn't do anything wrong and etc, etc. And then he comes in and he says, Jesus is saying, per Quran, and peace be on me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I will be raised alive. So these are the three things in sequence. Okay. So they, as they are in sequence, so he is, he is born like a few days ago or a few weeks ago, whatever. We don't know that at the moment. And then he said, peace will be the day on, I die. So if his death is not now, then when it is, right? And the day I will be raised alive. So then he will be raised alive. That is his second coming. Now, as per the Muslim translators or the tafsir or the commentaries would say sometimes, they would say he is talking about the day he was born and the day he will die on the second coming of his. So if this verse is talking about his second coming of the death of after his second coming, then basically what is happening is you are actually forgetting or you are actually ignoring the fact when he is here right now. So when he is actually raised alive right now is not even in the verse. So if you will say that this is about the second coming, the middle portion is about the second coming, then the verse should be the peace will be on the day I was born, the day I will be raised alive and the day I will die. You see the sequence of the verse, you have to see what the sequence of the verse is. You cannot just made it left and right. So if your Quranic tafsirs are actually correct, then this verse should actually say, peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I will be raised alive, and the day I will come back and die, or day I will be, oh. I will die. So this whole verse context is actually saying three oh. particular locations oh. and in a sequence. The day I'm born, the day I die, the day I will be raised alive. So, okay. so the verse is actually saying, which Islamic commentators actually change it to make it look like the narratives that they have, which actually have holes, as we know. <laughs> the, these are the holes that they they, exactly. They try to fill in. Yeah. So even if you look at it from the perspective that the day I was born, the day I die, so he died, and the day I am made to raise a life, so basically the second coming maybe. So no matter how you look at it, no matter how you look at it, if you do not change the sequence of the verse, as in which actually is sequence three, three portions, you will know that he actually died. But you do not proclaim that. And that's what I talked about on Friday as well, in a little more length. You know what? <laughs> you gave me an idea. I'm going to do something very unorthodox right now. Uh, and I'm going to get in trouble, and they're going to say that I'm a kafir. Well, they already say that, so I'm not. No, you are a, you are a kafir. <laughs> you are a mushrik. <laughs> According to them, yeah. You know what? I'm going to write, Salam alayya. I'm just going to say, <clears throat> Yom. Salam alayya, Yom. Yom uh, Wulidit, Yom Wulidit, Yom, Yom, Yom Al Amwat, Yom Abatu Hai, Yom, Yom Amut. Just because that right there, it, you know, just by you saying that, uh, you, you, you expose, you expose the exact problem you know which is you know uh, you know I, they're going to say that i'm i'm changing the quran which you know they changed it with their belief with their doctrine but <laughs> you are not changing the quran you are actually writing a translation in arabic so yeah you're not actually changing it but it says here salam alayya yom ulidit yom amut i just changed okay, it you change it so yeah <laughs> like if you change it <laughs> then it does make sense what they actually proclaim. Wow. But if you if you do not change it this way and you actually see it exactly how it is, yomul walidit, wal yomul amwat, wal yomul abus al haya. So my pronunciation of Arabic is not good, as you know. So don't 
count me on that. But once again, I'm the king of bad pronunciation. <laughs> but I, I just want to say this for the for the English speakers who don't know what 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 I wrote here. Yeah, there's a verse in the Quran, it's chapter 19, verse 33, and in it, Jesus is a baby. Uh, this is supposed to be a miracle. This is again, you know, Muhammad took a lot of things from the uh, uh, the apocryphal uh, apocryphal uh, gospels. And this is from the infancy gospel of Thomas, which the church doesn't recognize. But it's the infancy gospel of Thomas. And as a baby, in the infancy gospel of Thomas, Jesus spoke as a baby. And so Muhammad heard that from maybe the Christians of Najran or someplace. And so he uh, included it in the Quran. And in chapter 19 of the Quran, verse 33, Jesus as a baby says, Peace be upon me the day I am born, the day I die, the day I am raised to life. And so, but if you look at the, what Adam is saying, which is, I, it's the first time I've thought about this. You know, I mean, I, I always use this verse to talk to Muslims, but to show that, you know, the, that the, the Quran does say that Jesus died. Uh, and, and Father Zechariah mentioned this verse yesterday. And that, and then my cousin Nas, I think he's my cousin, I'm not sure. But Nasser Muhammad just asked about it. That's why I asked Adam to speak about it. But this verse says, it's, it's a very clear verse. Peace be upon me the day I am born, the day I die, the day I rise, I rise again to life. The day I am born, the day I die, the day I rise to life again. Uh, but the, Mus the way Muslims teach it now because of their scholars, not because of the Quran, but because of the way they've been taught in school, and, 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 and we were Muslim, so we believe this too. You, they actually change the order. And in, 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 and the, their order is, peace be upon me the day I'm born, the day I'm raised to life, the day, uh, I mean, uh, and the day I die. So that the, he's raised alive and, you know, to heaven, and then he comes back to die. That's how Muslims explain it. But they've actually changed the sequence, which is in this verse. The sequence is like what's in the Bible. He was born, he died on the cross, and rose again. That's what the Bible says. But and that's what the Quran says. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Muslims believe it's uh, the other way around, which is that he died, he was raised alive, and then he's going to come back to die. <laughs> and before somebody else states something, I know there is a certain sect which actually explained it a little differently as well. They say mm -hmm. that he was born. And then when his second coming comes, then he will die. And after the second coming, he dies, he will be raised alive again, raised again. But the problem with that situation is on the day of resurrection, everyone will be raised alive. There is no problem to, oh, there's man. no, no, no direct, um, no significance to say that in Quran that yes. he will be raised alive. Why is he saying that? at this particular time because that is the day of uh, resurrection where everyone will be resurrected so no matter how you actually uh, make a translation or tafsir of it you actually fall into problem because the verse is clear and quran says it's clear nine times uh, and the verse is actually saying the day i was born the day i die and the day i am raised alive and we know you know that died, and he and was raised alive. Peace will be the day on I die. So hello? Uh, yes, seems like I was repeating myself. <laughs> you know, what happened is that I, I opened the page and so they uh uh and so I, we got a little bit of confusion there. Sorry about that. So and you know the earliest uh Tafsir, yes, or not Tafsir, the earliest translate uh, hadith which comes through Bukhari, which Muslims proclaim. And without Bukhari, they don't even live, they can't even live, right? Yeah. Without Bukhari, they can't even offer, offer prayers. Uh, yeah. the salah, the five salah, they don't even know how many rakah are in Fajr, how many rakah are in Zohar and Asr and Maghrib and Isha. And they, 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 they can't even do the basic, they can't even perform Wadu. Like, you know, forget the rest of the things. You know, uh, you know, Adam. I just want to, because I've heard you say this before, and it's, it's such an important point. You know, for the Muslims who say, "No, I don't believe in the in the Hadith. I'm only in the Quran." You know that another thing too that I always ask them is, "How does somebody become a Muslim? If somebody wants to become a Muslim, what do they got to do? 
They got to say the two shahadas. There's no God but Allah and then Muhammad is, is there, you know, whatever. And you know what? That, that That's not, you cannot find the two together in the Quran. They're not in the Quran. Exactly. Really. You won't even find them in Sahih al-Bukhari. You find them in Sahih Muslim. You know, that's where Muhammad said, I've been commanded to fight the people until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And so even that, even to become a Muslim, you can't become a Muslim unless you say the two shahadas, which are in Sahih Muslim. So, so basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody actually gave me these two segment of verses from Quran. One is saying there is no God but Allah, and then in another location, Muhammad is the Nabi, uh, Nabi Allah. So I was like, come on, dude. Like you're serious. I yeah. said, give me a verse. It is like, and it is, it is portions of two different verses. Yeah. I like, come on, don't, don't, don't come into that. But once again, at least these two things are in Quran somewhere, here and there. Yeah. Right? Right. At least somewhere in the Quran, you can figure out something yeah. about that. Learn and stuff. But you can't, yeah, but like, you can't become a Muslim according to them. They're the ones who made up the rule that you got to say these things in order to become a Muslim. Exactly. Well, it's very clear. It's in Sahih Muslim. It's in the Hadith. It's not in the Quran. So, exactly. And then yeah. when you look at it, you can't even, like, it says, Qayyam Salah. Qayyam uh -huh. Salah. So how can you, Qayyam Salah? You, what, what, what do we do in that? Nothing. Uh, what timings? The Quran actually gives you three timings. You know that. Not even five timings to offer prayer. So, uh, like, it is that, like, Allah somehow had time to give verses to fight for Muhammad against his wives. Mm -hmm. Allah had time to describe ants are talking and they knew that the Solomon and his army is coming and the ants are proclaiming that Solomon and his army is coming. Like, oh my goodness. Like, for the, for I I for for some second I can I can think that yes Solomon had some kind of a godly power that he could uh, feel what ants are throwing through their tentacles and their feeling. But how did ant knew it was Solomon and his army? Like, how did ants knew it was Solomon and his army? Like, that's crazy. Ants could think, oh, something is coming. Like, <laughs> but. Like, uh -huh. You so, know, there was a, I don't know if you ever hear a Christian prince, but he was saying the other day, uh, he was saying that, uh, you know, the, that the Quran has time to talk about how the ants, how Solomon understood the ants and, you know, understood how to talk to birds and stuff. But it doesn't say that rape is, is forbidden, you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, to prohibit rape, you know. And so, but it does tell you about how to talk to ants. So, yeah. like, you actually allowed rape in Quran. No, uh, that's you are allowed to rape in yeah. Quran. Yeah, you, we'll, have to do, we'll have to do something about that another time. But yeah, I know it, it says that like go yeah. and have sex with them. Like yeah. that is raping. It's not sex. Like. <laughs> Okay, yes, we'll do that some other time before a lot of people will actually say, where is the references? This, I have the reference. I can start talking on that, but we will change you know from... I'm, I'm writing this down. I'm going to use this over and over and over again, that that verse 1933 should be changed. It should be changed to the what the Muslims really believe, which is it's peace be upon me the day I'm born, the day I'm raised to life, the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> just because that's the way they believe it so um uh, no, ex exactly I'm, I'm gonna have my part two of uh, the same series that i started it will be uh, it will be in 10 parts because the 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 whole discussion is too huge so yeah today after some time i'm gonna do that and it will be from this time like previous time it was why he was crucified and yes, he was crucified. And Quran actually gives you hints that he died. And from there, the next time, next, I am actually taking it to next stage where how he was born, what Quran's narrative is, and what is the biblical narrative is, and how the verses changed onto that. So, and and if I get more time, I will discuss the lineage of Jesus in Quran. 
So yeah, yeah this I will gonna and oh yeah, this, this guy I, I have a guy one of my uh, other cousins and he's saying he's not saying very nice things about you, Adam. I'm sorry to say. Oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm here for that. this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've never experienced this before, but <laughs> I just want to tell you what he's saying. He says, Steve Habibi, talk about something else and someone else uh, than your other half, Adam. Ha <laughs> ha. Steve, you're killing me. Man, this guy and his BS. He's talking about you like that. You know what? You know what, Joseph? If you're paying attention, you know, you I'm we're showing you that there's a big, big problem. And and this is a this is an issue that I, you know I talked about many times, and that is that Muslims believe a lot of stuff that's not even in the Quran. You know, and you ask me, you you know, you I always get criticized. Well, you don't believe in the Quran, so why do you talk about it? You know, but the, the truth of the matter is you don't believe in the Quran. The stuff that you believe isn't in the Quran. You don't even believe the Quran. And one thing Father Zechariah said yesterday, and he said it in Arabic, but it was a great quote. <laughs> he says that he says that uh, when Muslims say that Jesus wasn't crucified, uh, he didn't die. He says it's not from the Quran. It's not from Muhammad and it's not from Islam. It's not from the Quran, it's not from Muhammad, and it's not from Islam. Where it's from, you know, it you know they get it from TV, they get it from their uh, you know their radio shifts and uh, the, and everything, but it's not in the Quran, it's not from Muhammad, and it's not from Islam. So you know, <laughs> anyway, that's you know he just blew me away yesterday, man. It was great. So anyway, uh, you know what? I really appreciate what you said. You know, the sequence, that sequence thing about um Salam Alay Yomulidit, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up again. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to use that. I mean, that is just an a, a, an amazing thing. Just the sequence that the Quran provides, because the sequence is it's similar to the Bible. You know, one time I was on uh, one time I was on TBN, you know, the uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network with uh, Paul Crouch. And I was doing an interview, and 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 I told them that the Quran says this verse: "Peace be upon me, the day I'm born, the day I die, the day I'm raised to life." He went. He was hysterical. He was so happy. He says the Quran says that. I said, "Yeah." And the thing that's really powerful about this verse, you know, I mean, we don't believe in it, but it still is the fact that it's got the sequence right: death. I mean, birth, death, resurrection. Exactly. And that's what the Quran says. The Quran says it the right way. But Muslims, in their beliefs, have twisted it now. They have uh, They are have put it in different order. So, so this is a, thank you. You just gave me a new tool in my shed for, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to and I'm going to use it. I'm going to beat this horse till it's dead and it's not going to rise again. So thank you. <laughs> praise Lord, praise Lord. Yeah, imagine like we were discussing the same verse on Friday as well, but sometimes it doesn't click at that time, and sometimes it clicks at a later time. So yeah, I actually showed this and I actually explained this as well. But once again, uh, like show me. So let me give them uh, a very nice thing. I think somebody. Oh, 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 I just want to tell everyone. Beware when he says, I want to give you a very nice thing. That means you got something coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, somebody, I think it was Muhammad Isa in, in Facebook. He actually gave me challenge. He said, show me where Jesus said, worship me. Uh -huh. And I gave him two different gospels, two different locations where people... We're worshiping Jesus, right? And so basically, he doesn't have to say, worship me when people are actually worshiping him, right? <laughs> and I was like, show me where your Quran actually says, Isa died. Mm -hmm. Give me the exact words. Because he actually proclaimed, he still never said, worship me. So basically, what you're telling me, the whole congregation of 4,000, 5,000 people or 600 people or whatever, they are worshiping me and I have to say, hey, don't worship me. And then I say, oh, worship me. Or maybe I should say, hey, worship me. When actually they are worshiping me, I have to say worship me. Like, is that, is that, like, that was the most stupid argument by him 
that he actually didn't say, even though that I was showing him the verses. And I can show the verses uh, as well if you want. And you know it's it's in the gospel. But the whole scenario is you cannot find just, just like you cannot find worship Jesus, verse, Jesus saying worship me in Bible, because by, in Bible people are worshiping him, so it's not a problem. But yeah. in Quran, you actually cannot find that he did not die. So show me from Quran yeah. which a, a clear verse which says he did not die. Did not and die. and I showed you a clear verse from Quran that he himself in Quran is stating, yeah. I died and I will raise again. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and the, uh, you know, I, I, I wrote a little book. I wrote a book. Uh, I wrote it years and I really felt the Holy Spirit. You know, it's funny because I, at the time, somebody wanted me to write a book about them. You know, I used to, because I used to be a reporter. So I used to write, you know, in newspapers. And, uh, and so I know how to write, you know, that's one of my uh, things I do as an occupation is write. And, uh, and, and somebody wanted me to write, be a ghostwriter for them, you know, to write a book about them. And so I was talking to the person and everything. But you know what? The Holy Spirit put something else in my heart. And, and you know what? I couldn't write that book about that person until I wrote what the Holy Spirit told me to write. And he told me to write this. And it's a book called Son of Mary. And I've got it. Uh, there's two books here. That's because it's the same book, but it's uh, one's in Arabic, one's in English. And uh, it's called Son of Mary. And I talk about this exact subject here. These three verses in the Quran that Father Zechariah spoke about yesterday. And, uh, you know, which is one of them where, where uh, Jesus says, you know, peace be upon me the day I'm born, the day I die, the day I rise again. Or the way the Muslims say it. Peace be upon me the day I'm born, the day I rise again, and the day I die. You know, they harrafu in Quran. Uh, and, and then the other one where Jesus, uh, where it's Allah says to Jesus, Oh, Jesus, I made you to die and, and raise you up to myself. And then the other one in, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 117, where uh, Jesus says to Allah, The day you made me to die, when you made me to die, you became a watcher over them. So, you know. It's very clear that this subject is huge. And, you know, Joseph is saying that, you know, change the subject, talk about something that people want, you know. It's like, dude, this is the most important subject. Oh, no, he actually wants to listen. And that's why he's here. So yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why he's here. And that's... Let, uh, let, me say, let, me, let me just read to you what Joseph said, just because he's, since he's online, you know, I, I, you know, if he says something that's worth responding to, I'd like to respond to it. He says, this guy, Adam, is, sorry, Adam, he's attacking you big time. You know what? You, you always rile up my cousins, man. I don't know what it is about you. Dude, the spirit is moving. That's the beauty. <laughs> my cousins, you, you irritate them. You get under their skin, man, which thank you for doing that. But hopefully that'll bring them to Jesus, man. But anyway, let me see what he says here. He says, but anyway, I told you to, uh, I mean, Jesus told you. Let me see. Okay. Did Jesus told you something? Wait, wait, uh, you yeah, Jesus sorry. told you to pray to him. Uh, did Jesus told you to pray to him or God? Think about, well, think, are you doing God's work or the devil's work? Let me, let me answer that. Uh, Matthew chapter number 14, verse number 32 and 33. Rather, I'll start from 31. Immediately. Jesus reached out his hands and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Yes. So, <laughs> so when people are worshipping him, he is with those people. They are worshiping him, yet he has to say, hey, worship me. Like, yeah. what is praying? Praying is worship. Praying is salah. Praying is worshiping. So when people are worshiping him, and, and then the, again, and the, he has to say, uh, worship me? Yeah. Like, is that what you're asking, Joseph? And there was also the situation, there was also the situation where there were 10 lepers who came to Jesus, and, and they said, Lord, heal us. Lord, heal us. And 
and they were all Jews except for one. One was a Samaritan. And, and, and Jesus says, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they, as they went, they were healed. And then it says that out of the ten, one came back and worshipped Jesus. Exactly. And, and, you know, what did Jesus say? He says, weren't there ten healed? Where are the other nine? One was worshipping him. He says, where are the other nine? Only one came back. This foreigner came back to worship me. Where's the other nine? You know, he was expecting worship from all of them. Exactly. Only one came back, you know. And so, you know, Muslims, you better start. You better get this right. And, you know, and like I said, I say this at the end of every program. I try to. The reason I'm doing this, this live stream is because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back soon. And if you don't get this right, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell. Jesus said there's only one way to go to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus. If you don't get this right, don't just argue for art. Don't waste your time arguing. Find the truth. Ask God to show you the truth, because if you don't, you're going to go to hell. You have to get this right. Open your heart. Don't just argue for the sake of argument, which is what a lot of Muslims like to do. Just argue, 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 waste time. No, don't do that. Find the truth. Open your heart. Ask God, God, show me the truth, because he will. He loves you. Both of us. I'm, I, I'm you know, I, I'm an ex-Muslim. You know, Adam is an ex-Muslim, you know. And, there, you know, and you know, one, one thing I like to say, too, is that, you know, uh, you know, and I've done this before. I've had other guests that I've had to do this with, you know, uh, on this live stream. And, and that is, you know, one thing that you notice is that you can't see Adam's face. You can't see Adam's face. Why can't you see Adam's face? Because... He'll, it's very likely he'll be killed if he shows his face. That's Islam. That's Islam. That's who you're following. Muhammad, who says, Man dinu fa who changes his religion, kill him. That's who you're following. That's that's who you're following, who you're trusting with your eternity. So uh, anyway, sorry. No worries. And, and basically when uh, Jesus was raised, came back to disciples, showed uh, them, worked yeah. with them. You, in you Luke. Know, Adam, uh, I just want to, you know, this is an opportunity for you to show uh, to uh, to answer. You know, uh, there's an opportunity for you to answer. Joseph is going on and on now. Look, uh, there's <laughs> like four comments. Show your face, man. Show your face, man. Why awesome. won't you? Why won't you show your face, man? Please show remove the apostasy on. law, and yeah. I will show my face, and not just me. A lot of apostates will show their faces. And you will see the true face of Islam. Remove the apostate law. Go be courageous. Remove the laws from Iran, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Maldives. Remove these. And I will show my face. And I will show you your hypocrisy. You guys are shouting because you can. And yeah. when we stay, say something, you guys come and shout about it. So my face is more important or the words that I'm showing you from your own scripture are more important. What I am showing and what I'm telling is important, not my face. Yeah. You want to kill me? Is that what you want? Don't, uh, don't be a man from the dark. <laughs> That's the most silly thing because yes, Muhammad ignored dark people. Muhammad says that if you sin, you will your face will become dark, your heart will become dark. These are in hadiths. He actually gave two dark people to save one of his kind, uh, uh, two dark slaves to save one of his kind. Yes, you are actually showing the teaching of your own Ummi prophet, and Ummi is not illiterate. Ummi is not unlettered. Quran actually says the whole Arabian Peninsula is Ummi. So the whole Arabian Peninsula was Ummi, then basically the whole Arabian Peninsula could not actually have anything. Basically, when Quran says that it is the miracle, because at that time it was all sings and songs and hymns, and it was in the best of the Arabic language, then Quran was talking to Ummis. No, Ummi actually means pagan. And that's what you translate when it is about the Arabian people. But mm -hmm. when Ummi is written for the Muhammad, you actually translate as unlettered. You guys have the most hypocritic translation ever. Same word, but you use it differently without any contextual difference. Muhammad was a pagan before he was, uh, he said Allah is, is, is his God. So that's what it is. Hey, Adam.
do you know the, what the hadith says about what Muhammad called the king of Ethiopia? The raisin head? <laughs> now, why, why, why did Muhammad call the king of Ethiopia a raisin head? Because he, he, uh, because of his color and his, uh, because uh, he's black, right? Exactly, color because of his color, and he actually called. Even if the Ethiopian raisin head will become your leader, you some have to have, accept him. Like this is how derogatory he is. He has to call them raisin head. You know what raisin is? Is like black people. It's like calling black people raisin heads. That's what Muhammad, Muhammad, the you know the prophet of Islam, called. Black people raise in head. That's <laughs> what else can I say? Yeah. You know, because yeah. because that, that when he calls him a raisin head, it's because he was black. And exactly. so, so if he's saying that, what about other black people? Are other black people, would he call other black people? Because quite often you hear that Muhammad is the God of, you know, the prophet of the, of the black man. But this is what he said about black men. Dude, uh, he said it multiple times in multiple narrations. He actually proclaimed it through different people were listening. And hence, there are multiple hadiths on that. You just go to sunnah.com and write a raisin head and you will see so many hadiths. Not one, not two, so many that he proclaimed that. Ghulam is basically or usually is black. So go to sunnah.com and write black slave and you will see so many hadiths. So... The thanks to the internet and thanks to these these Muslims scholars who actually translated it in English, they made it easier for snip search of all of these things. Wow, that's a you know when I heard that you know because you you know there was a big movement in the United States you know with the black Muslim and stuff like that that you know Islam is the religion of the black man and stuff. It's like it's not what Muhammad did, you know. He, like you were saying, you know, he treated black people as, as inferior, you know, when he, he oh. traded two, two black slaves for one Arab slave. And, uh, you know, we, we need to talk about that because you, when you talked about that last time, you also started a fire on my on my uh, live stream. Thank you so much. But <laughs> I have sent you a picture. I am talking. I'm actually talking sometimes with Donald Dorsey. He is a black uh, U.S. resident who proclaims to be a veteran. Okay. And this is what he sent me. And he sent these kind of things to me quite oftenly. Like it's not, it's not that it is uh, uncommon. It is very common. And he used to say, shut the hell up. You always get, and then, and once again, uh, I don't give a damn pagan if I knew where you were capital God only knows God only knows capital you are lucky I do not know where you are at wow he is a, a American black Muslim veteran because I had a discussion with him on different subjects and he cannot give me the answer. At the end, this is a military veteran has to proclaim for me on Facebook public post. I don't give a damn capital letters pagan normal letters. If I knew where you were, God only knows God only knows. You are lucky I don't know where you are at. Oh, and then oh, people like Joseph are saying, show your face. <laughs> you know what? That You know what, you guys? It's almost like every time he comes on, it's like I have to say this again, you know, because there's this lie that Islam is the religion of peace. And uh, you know what? Uh, here, here's why Islam is not a religion of peace, you know? This shows you that, you know, first of all, he can't show his face. Every time he comes on, I, I don't even know what he looks like. I, you know, and, and you know, and so, but here's the, uh, here's the uh, thing that, that um, let's just go ahead and, and read it. You know, uh, let's go ahead and read it. It's uh, with Donald Dorsey says, 
you need to remove the joseph you remove the joseph comment uh, so that it will be visible okay okay sorry joseph uh, basically happened was starts from the beginning he actually made a personal attack on me and i said from the beginning and now you go to personal attack again so that's where it began so okay and then he says you need to shut the hell up you always get personal pagan that's why i personally can't i personally can't stand you and then adam and once again you show me where i attacked you personally i showed you where uh muhammad, muhammad. you your kind personally oh okay you're talking about the black people yeah yeah um, i don't give a damn pagan if i know where you were god only knows only knows you're lucky i don't know where you're at you know what in, in the united states if this was in the united states that guy could be arrested that's a threat that's a this, threat this is united states <laughs> he's a veteran of united states wow that's a threat that's uh, a per his facebook page he lives in california and this is not the first time he said that he said different kind of things he gives hints he never says i'm gonna kill you and the next reply for me was so per your muhammad you are supposed to kill me and then he removes everything so oh. he knows how to how to get out of what he is saying but this is not the first time first time that he proclaimed that okay you know uh i have another cousin <laughs> my cousins are really so, you, bring out the, you bring out the best in my cousins but they're oh. calling I'm not sure if he's talking about you or about me, but they're calling one of us the Antichrist. No, but I like Dajjal. No, Dajjal is not Antichrist. Oh, you okay. translate him as, as Antichrist, but Dajjal is not Antichrist. He's a Dajjal. And Prophet Muhammad gave full descriptions of Dajjal. He's one-eyed, he's short, yeah. and and you will not you will only know him that by Allah is not one-eyed. So the only difference between Dajjal and Allah is that Allah is not one-eyed. So you can read it in, 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 in Hadith. Uh, I will show you that Hadith. Let me find out where it is. I am at sunnah.com. You, so, yeah. you, you, you know what, uh, Adam? We're running out of time, actually. And uh, we're almost an hour. We've been on for an hour already. But uh, oh, wow. we, we covered a lot of ground and uh, talked to many cousins. <laughs> so this is, just, just, just to give you, this is Sahib Muslim 2933. Okay. There is never a prophet who has not wanted uh, warned the ummah of the one-eyed liar, the Dajjal. Behold, he is one-eyed, and your Lord is not one-eyed. <laughs> so this is this is how, and one of them is actually pretty clear where it says he is one-eyed, he is short, he is this, he is that, and your Allah is not one-eyed. Yeah. And that's that's the Dajjal, by the way. And uh, you are actually not one-eyed, so you could be your their lord basically <laughs> oh father god we want we want you know I, you know i just want let me just we talked about some very very important subjects today and, and we touched on some very important things today you know number one I, I want to talk about what father zachariah said yesterday and if you're arab and you're watching or you watch this later on I just want to tell you go back and watch what father zachariah said yesterday it was devastating it was so amazing uh, and so I wanted to bring Adam on to talk about this because Adam knows the Quran, he knows the Hadith, you know, and so he can really respond. And you gave us some great, great ammunition. Thank you so much. Uh, but, uh, but you know, every time he comes on, I also have to point out that I, can't, I don't know what he looks like. It's like I don't know what my brother looks like. Why don't I know? Because of what, look what an American Muslim tells him. Look what an American, you know, and and my cousin Joseph keeps saying, show your face, show your face, show your face. You're, you're a coward. Show your face, show your face. Please show your face, man, like a man. Show your face. Well, and you know, Joseph, this is the reason why he can't show his face. I mean, an American. This is what an American sent to him. He says, he says, oh, you're lucky I don't know where you're at. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of danger that you know and i know that most muslims are wonderful beautiful peaceful people but this is what islam teaches though Man dino fa that's what muhammad said the words of muhammad and I, you know what i'm showing my face and god help me someday maybe somebody's gonna say hey i know i've seen him before he delivers pizzas and so <laughs> 
by the way you are actually showing it because you are a u.s national you have a u.s passport you have a you live in u.s which is not an islamic country right. i do not have a u.s passport yes. right yeah. i am bound by the laws of my country yeah. and per the laws and let alone the laws <laughs> before yeah. the laws get implemented man you have no idea what my tribe is and yeah. who my tribe was and i think i told you previously let's not give any details let's not give any details because exactly. i'm worried about you man i scare i i worry about you and i don't <laughs> you know i i used to live in a, i used to live for many years in a you know a muslim country and so uh i i i know i know that i mean i don't know it to the same degree that you know it but you know the danger is very real and i was threatened many times you know then i was beat up i was beat up three times and uh you know so i i know the reality and you know and and i know a lot of muslims are saying especially if you watch cnn especially if you watch cnn how peaceful islam is and how beautiful and kind and if you see the we love Jesus tables that they put in the malls in the United States and in the universities uh, and in the in the universities, you know, taxpayer funded universities, we love Jesus tables that the Muslims put over there and how, how loving and kind and, you know, and then they have all these uh, these American uh, and they don't know what they're saying, but they're don't know that this was a nice way to say shahada by the way <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what i'm showing in my 10 part series that isa of quran is not even jesus so don't even proclaim that you love jesus you love some guy who is isa who has who has who doesn't even have the characteristics of jesus basically if you look at it but basic but once again if you look deep and you actually f leave the deceptive tafsir uh, commentaries. Let me just put it this way so that the people who doesn't know what tafsir is, they would know. And you actually read Quran and the verses about Jesus or Isa, you will realize that there are hints there. There are hints of the truth because Muhammad kept stealing things from the New Testament and the Old Testament. And hence you have hints in there, left, right and center. And the problematic thing is that you have something in chapter 5, you have something in chapter 3, you have something in chapter 4, something in chapter 19. So you have Jesus like, like everywhere. And there are total uh, 96 locations where Jesus has been proclaimed in Quran. Wow. There are 25 locations where Jesus has been mentioned by name. Yeah. And in Quran, there are only four locations where Muhammad has been proclaimed. And yeah. even in those four locations, if you do not take Muhammad as the name and you actually translate it, you will realize that those four locations are actually not talking about Muhammad. Mm. Yeah. Be just translate those locations, just translate those locations and you will realize that they are talking about some praised one. Yeah. And who is the praised one? We all know Jesus is the praised one. <laughs> so Quran doesn't even talks about Muhammad. Yeah. Quran just talks about a praised one. But once again, why is the name of Isa mentioned 25 times by name versus Muhammad is mentioned only four times? Why? Number two, the, there is a whole chapter for the mother of Jesus. Maryam. Yeah. There is a single verse for yeah. the yeah. mother of Muhammad. Amen. Yes. None. Yeah. None. There is a whole birth narrative of Jesus in Quran. Mm -hmm. There is nothing of the birth narrative of Muhammad in Quran. Why? Muhammad for 40 years was nothing. Was nothing. He was a servant. He was a servant of a Christian lady. So-called Christian lady. Lukewarm Christian lady. He was a servant. Yeah. A gulam. Because that's what you try to translate Gulam of a Christian, lukewarm Christian lady. Rather, not even Christian, you call them Nasara, yeah. right? Yeah. Nazareth, the people yeah. who were she thrown was, away. She was every yeah. yeah. So, so that's 
that is that is how destructive it is that the woman cannot offer you prayer woman cannot be your hakim you woman cannot be your uh, king or your your uh, anybody but muhammad was serving a woman muhammad served a woman this is how destructive it is the prophet of islam never knew that jibrail came to him i will not even say gabriel Jibrail came to him. He never knew that. Yeah. The the lady of the house told her him that yeah. oh you are a prophet. That was Jibrail. Yeah. He squeezed him. He hugged him. He did X Y Z things. Oh, he told okay. him read, and then his <laughs> wife has to tell him don't get scared. It was not a demon. It was a Jibrail. It was he a. Thought, he thought it was a demon though. Exactly. That's what Hadith says. I am demon possessed, and he said, "No, no, 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 no." The messenger jinn, you know, a demon touched me. So, so, like yeah, this brother Adam, uh, we need to uh, we need to end it now. We're we're already gone over time here. We're supposed to be an hour, but we've gone. Uh, <laughs> we're all into ten minutes, but we're gonna please definitely continue this. Close, yeah, please close it with the with the with the with the word of God. Yes, uh, we need to. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, there's so much. We touch on so many things today, and and uh, you know, like I like I always say, you know, the reason I'm doing this is not just to be a pain, just to irritate everybody, because you know, you know, like they call me a djad. You know, today someone called me djad. You know, and he's not the first. It's because Jesus is coming back. He could come back. Amen. Today. Jesus might come back today, and you need to be ready to meet him. And if you're not ready to meet him, if you're not ready to meet him, you're going to go to hell. Just put it simply. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you don't get right with Jesus, you're going to go to hell. Let's just say it plain and simple. I tend them. You're going to go to hell. There's no way out of going to hell except to accept Jesus into your heart. I'm getting uh, I'm getting this huge comment right now from from Nasser. I'm going to show it. I'm not going to read it. It's, it's going to take me an hour. It's in Arabic, and so. Uh, but Nasser, uh, when you say good things, Nasser, I respond to you. Last time you said some good things, I did a whole video responding to you. And I, and if it, I'm not, I don't have time to read this right now, but I will later on, and maybe we'll do another video about it. But uh, right now we're at the end of the program, so I, you know I can't just stay here for another three hours but uh but everybody i just want to ask you to do three things i want you to be ready in case jesus comes back today in case jesus comes back today i want you to be ready so just 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 say the, these words with me if you're if if your heart's open just say this say dear god i'm a sinner yes forgive me for my sins yes i believe in jesus yes I believe that he died on the cross. Yes. Like the Quran says. <laughs> and that he rose again. Like the yes. Quran says. <laughs> and that he's in heaven with you now. Like the Quran says. <laughs> yes. I believe Praise he Lord Jesus. died for me. He died for my sins. To forgive my sins. To save me from Jahannam. To save me from Jahim. Save me from hell. Jesus save me. I don't want to go to hell. Save me, Jesus. Come into my heart. Amen. Home. Give me a new life. If you say that from your heart, he heard you. He loves you. We love you. I love you. Because and, uh, Jesus said, because it is said in the word of God, there was no mocker in him. There was no deception in him. <laughs> and Allah said he is the Khairul Makarim. Lord, it. save us from the deception. Lord, save us from the deception. I proclaim that in Jesus' name. Save us from the deception. Save all the people who are listening. Save them from the deception. Because there is no deception in you. But yeah. there is all marker in Allah. Because he proclaimed it's it. Not us. It's his name. It's his name. It didn't make any. But uh, you know what? <laughs> you know, And you know what? It's so funny that that's his name. The best of deceivers. You know why? Because whenever the disciples ask Jesus in the Bible, what is the sign of your coming? The first 
thing Jesus said to them always is beware that no one deceive you for me yes. will come. He always said, that's the first thing he said. He said, don't let nobody muck up. No, beware of the maked. <laughs> and then so and then they come then Allah comes and says, Hey, I'm Khiril Makirin. You know, it's just like he's not even hiding. The devil's not even hiding. So anyway, brother, we gotta go. God bless Thank you. you for being God with God bless me. you. The Lord be with you, and uh, hopefully we'll be again soon. So the Lord be with Amen. you. Amen. All right. God bless you. Hey, thank you everybody for being with us, and the Lord be with you.